Hi there! So today I want to get started with a little project I've been thinking about for the past few months by showing you the kind of items I'll be using. So first of all is this one. It is actually one of those digital photo frame thingies where they have like an LCD screen and you plug in like a memory card and I'll show you the contents of that memory card. Pictures and maybe videos and all that kind of good stuff. So this is actually a SoftBank branded photo frame. SoftBank is a wireless carrier in Japan, that's probably like the third biggest one or something. I don't know why they were actually making these and selling these or giving it away or whatever, but I found this at a, a second-hand store for 500 yen, so before that it probably was a little more than that. I saw a price that's a little higher under this sticker. 1480, so it used to be about 15 US dollars. It was selling for about five at the time. I got this. Um, if it was more than 500 yen, I probably wouldn't have bought it because I'm going to use this as a basis for building a, or what I'm hoping to build a, Raspberry Pi or Raspberry Pi Zero W based, not quite tablet, but a display in one PC using this photo frame as a base. And in order to actually connect the Raspberry Pi to the photo frame, I'm going to need to use something like this. This is a board that would allow me to connect a HDMI input and connect it directly to the LCD of this photo frame. Let's go ahead and take a look inside this photo frame and see how things will fit together. Alright, so first of all, we're going to have to open this box up and take a look at the actual photo frame, which I haven't done yet, as you can see from this little shrink wrap that's on there. So let's go ahead and cut that out. And let's go ahead and open the box. As you can see, this is probably second hand, so um, it looks like it's in pretty good shape. It even has instructions in there. And the AC adapter and the actual item is right here. Take that out. I guess there's instructions in there, but that's not what I'm actually looking for. But you know what? What other parts do they have? Okay, so just AC adapter, so nothing too interesting there. Anything over here? Nope, just some instructions that barely look used. Let's get rid of this box. And what we're interested in is this photo frame. Let's take it out. Alright, so it looks pretty clean. Wow, even this thing's not taken off yet. Can you see that? See that little cover thing isn't taken off yet. Wow. So this thing is maybe possibly not even used at all. And there's actually a little sticker up here that says the data inside this um, device has been already erased. So that's good. Alright, so on the back there's actually a slot for an SD card or multimedia card. And a slot for a micro sim, I guess. So yeah, I guess this is able to connect to the wireless network and do whatever it has to do. And a power plug. Actually a pretty small one down here. Uh, power on off and a little stand so that you can put your so that you can stand your photo frame. Aside from that, nothing really interesting. I guess this is manufactured in October of 2009 by Huawei for SoftBank Mobile. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm not really interested about how the photo frame works as is. I want to take a look inside and see what kind of things are packed in there. Alright, so I was hoping there would just be some screws that I can unscrew and get this thing open, but just a cursory look at it, I can't see any screw holes anywhere, and I don't really feel anything over here either. Well, there is a little bit of a bump down here. Maybe, maybe there might be a screw there. Um... Oh, well, maybe here as well. That's kind of suspicious. Yeah, okay, well, maybe here. And maybe here. here. Let's see if we can see anything if I press down on it hard. Yeah, there's some kind of indentation here. And here as well. Alright, so I'm going to try to take a look and see if there's any screws in here so I can open this up. So yeah, basically this little seal was hiding these three screws. 
All right, so we got that out of the way. Let's see if we take these screws off, whether this thing will just come off easily or not. And interestingly, there's actually a little sticker that says warning seal right over here. So I guess they did expect someone to actually take a look inside and see if they can play with it. So hopefully cracking this open would be pretty easy. Just hoping it is. I'm just gonna take this screw out. Okay, all right, so is this gonna come out easily or? Okay, yeah, it's not coming out. So it doesn't seem like it's gonna plop out, but maybe with a little bit of encouragement it might come out. So yeah, it's not gonna come out too easily. Maybe it can go along the seam and see if it's gonna release some, um, you know, little latches or something on the side. Maybe a little tool like this. Whoa. Yeah, it seems like it's starting to open up. It's pretty tight on there. Oops, it's really coming out now. You can see a lot of open space in there. So there seems to be three latches on the side. I got the first one over here. There's probably two more here that need to be freed. It's just a little bit hard to get in there. Oh, and the tool broke. All right, maybe it's something a little bit different. I think we're pretty close. Oops. Okay, I think we were there. Let's see if this will come right off. Yep, it's opening now. Here we go. So as you can see, we have some kind of circuit board over here and we have an LCD panel over here and it's connected by this little ribbon cable that I don't want to break so yeah let's take a closer look at that next all right so I'm gonna try to get this plug off first then next tackle the ribbon cable over here so first of all hopefully this will come off easily yep there it goes and for this one okay, maybe I just have to pull yeah okay so if I pull on that it's going to release that ribbon cable, like, I think this is how it's going to release it. What? Oh, it's taped on here. Okay. So this ribbon cable is actually taped onto the circuit board as well. So yeah, you can see the sticky stuff right over here. All right, so now we've been able to separate the LCD part and the whatever else is in here, I guess. All right, so here's the LCD part. Um, I really don't have to look further because I'm pretty sure what the model of the LCD is in here, but just for the sake of showing it on video, I think I'll go ahead and remove this little cover. All right, so here's the LCD module. I was hoping to just look at the model number on this thing. So I'm just taking this little shielding thing off. What I think is a shielding. Being careful not to touch the LCD itself. And yep, yeah, there it is. So this is a InnoLux Display AT070TN83 version 1, and that, I believe, is able to be used by the LCD driver that I showed you earlier. So hopefully this connects like this, and we should be able to use 
this display through an HDMI interface. Actually, that's a little worrisome. The size of that ribbon cable doesn't fit exactly. So I'm gonna have to figure out what's going on. Okay, so I guess what happened was that I wasn't actually expecting this particular LCD to be in here. I think I was expecting an AT070TN92 or something along that line to be in here, but it turned out to be a TN83. This LCD controller is not for this particular board. This, I believe, has a a 50-pin TTL interface to connect to the LCD, but it appears that this one only has like a 40-pin interface, so this board's not going to cut it. Okay, that's kind of a not-so-good thing that I found out about this, which means that I'll have to get a different one to run this display. But at least now I know. All right, so let's get this LCD out of the way. And we'll take a look at this side. So this side is the actual logic board, I believe, that does all the picture display and all that kind of goodies. Yeah, let's go ahead and take this apart and see what's in there. The thing is, if I replace this with the Raspberry Pi, it's obviously not gonna be needed anymore. So let's go ahead and see how much space I'll have if I take this logic board out and how much space I'll need for the LCD driver and power um, voltage converter or whatever that might be needed to power this thing. So let's go ahead and take this out. I believe it's just those four screws. Yep, nothing special. Wow, that's a lot of shielding. So yeah, here's the logic board. Well. Can't see a whole lot other than that. The place for the SD card and the SIM. So yeah, and there's like a battery on here as well. Okay, that's interesting. So yeah, it looks like there's ample space to fit like a Raspberry Pi and a display module like that. And possibly maybe even space for some internal battery, perhaps. This seems like something I'll be able to play with. For example, if we had a Raspberry Pi Zero W in here, that's a lot of space to play with. And since this is wireless, I'm not going to need any Ethernet connection or something to connect, so I wouldn't have to use a Raspberry Pi 3 in here or drill a hole for Ethernet. Also, I'd be able to put in maybe like a battery in here and power this without being connected to the wall. And yeah, even the module like this would be fitting in here just fine. All right, now I pretty much know what I have to do basically get a different one of these and I now know that there's a lot of space in here once we get this logic board out of the way. Alright so that's pretty much what I have for today. If you enjoyed watching this video I'd appreciate it if you give it a like. If you have any comments please leave them down in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer them. If you'd like to see more videos like this please subscribe to my channel and be sure to click on that little bell notification thing so that you know when I upload new videos. As always thank you very much for watching and see you next time.